Hey guys, it's Carl here back with a revisited review today and we are checking out the Huawei P40 Pro series. So these have been out now for the past six months. It's been half a year. And the reason why I've waited so long, people have been on the fence on what to kind of think about Huawei lately. Because hardware wise, there's no doubt, still some of the best smartphones currently on the market. It's just the question around GMS, Google mobile services, as Huawei is pivoting away from that. Can you use these devices still right now in 2020? And what does the future of Huawei kind of look like going forward? And as long as you have an open mind when you're using Huawei devices, and I hope most of you that watch my videos, you do that when you use any piece of tech. You're not a strict Apple fanboy. If it doesn't have stock Google or stock Android, you don't even wanna look at it. And if you have that, these devices still offer some of the best mobile experiences and more importantly, helps drive that innovation forward. That variety helps push that change forward and not just in mobile devices, but all tech in general. So just keep that floating in the back of your head. Don't be stuck in your ways and keep an open mind when using other pieces of tech that are different than what you're used to. Okay, and Rand, let's get into the actual review. We'll start off with the things that I actually like and maybe we'll transition into things that need some work. So we do have the P40 Pro Plus and the standard P40. They're actually both quite similar. They have slight differences, maybe with the finishing first. The Pro Plus is made in a ceramic, so it has a bit more of a premium finish. It actually feels a bit heftier. The standard P40, still one of my favorite colorways to date. The Silver Frost, which is the matte gradient finishing, this should help help hide fingerprints a bit more, but kind of take your pick on which you guys prefer. The cameras on the back, probably my favorite feature of these devices. It's got a quad lens setup made in collaboration with Leica. I think that speaks volumes. It takes some of the nicest smartphone shots that I've used. The main 50 megapixel sensor is the standout and the only difference in the Pro Plus, you can get up to 10 times optical zoom and up to 100 times hybrid. And I'm not saying using ultra zoom cameras is a must. It's just nice that you have that extra versatility. If that doesn't matter to you, honestly, just lean on over to the Pro. You don't need the Pro Plus. The shots that I get out of these cameras have been awesome and I actually post those straight to Instagram. I do tweak them a bit in Lightroom, but that's the same for say my Sony camera. More surprisingly though, on the video side, way better than my handheld cameras is the stabilization. A lot of the video footage completely usable handheld, whereas say my A7R 3 I'd have to carry around a gimbal just to get a similar result. And obviously the sensor size compared to a full frame camera isn't as big, but in the mobile smartphone world, still one of the larger sensors found on a smartphone camera. And when you flip around the phone to the display, which is held up great, it's a 6.58 inch panel with a 90 Hertz refresh rate. As long as you're over that 60 mark, I find that completely fine. The difference between 90 and 120 is pretty much negligible and I prefer the 90 just to have extra battery life and for the phone to last longer. It's pretty much edge to edge with the slightest curves around the side. My only criticism is still the large front facing camera cutout. And in the end though, it isn't too big of a deal breaker and I'd still prefer that than having an oversized forehead. And the thing that I actually love most about the display, especially during this entire pandemic, is the in-screen fingerprint sensor. I know facial recognition is a bit wonky now because we all tend to wear masks. So just having that option, it's super quick. And when I'm here, say in the studio or back home, just using facial recognition to unlock works totally fine as well. And my overall experience using the device, even six months later, hasn't diminished at all. So the phone is still super quick and snappy. So it's running off of eight gigs of RAM, the Kirin 990 chipset. Still based off of Android 10 with EMUI skin over top, obviously isn't as simple or isn't as pure as stock Android. There's a couple cool perks and gestures that I like. So for example, knocking on the device will actually take a screenshot. I send those all the time to my friends. And my second favorite being the reverse wireless charging has saved my life countless times. I know this ends up becoming the world's most expensive power bank, but just having that versatility once again is clutch to charge up any of your accessories that might need some extra juice. And for the spec heads, 4,200 milliamp hours of juice. And I know that batteries tend to degrade over time, but in the six months, I've had neither of these devices, even with heavy, heavy gaming use, have died on me by the end of the day. So that's really good to know. 
And I've saved, of course, the juiciest topic for last. How does this device perform app-wise as it doesn't have GMS? Google mobile services, you can't access the Google Play Store. You know, I've mentioned this previously, you've got the three main ways to download apps. The first, of course, being phone clone. So any device that you've had previously, you can just copy and transfer apps that already exist onto your P40 device. The second being App Gallery, which is Huawei's official app store. You still can't get apps, say like Instagram, Google Maps, and that's where you're gonna start using pedal search. It should now be fully available to most regions and it's that gateway to apps that you normally wouldn't be able to access. So for example, I can look up Google Maps. That's a great example. Totally available and you can still update the app. Maybe the next, the one that I use the most, Instagram. You can't find that on App Gallery. You can find that through pedal search. And it's not like we're launching a web version of the app. It's a completely functioning application. So that's a quick little workaround on how to access your favorite apps. And like I mentioned, you just have to have a bit of an open mind. You have to be able to use other workarounds because as Huawei's both hardware and software continues to evolve, I know they're spending over a billion dollars in getting app developers onto their platform. These devices will only get better over time and just having the multitude of options in the consumer space for technology, I feel like we're super lucky. But yeah, that was my revisited review of the Huawei P40 series. I hope that answered a lot of your questions around these devices. Always happy to chat with you guys down below in the comments. And I'm curious what you guys think the future looks like for Huawei. Hope to catch the rest of you in one of my next episodes or vlogs. Peace.